Hi guys, today I'm going to be reviewing Stochastic. First of all, I want to say thank you so much to Coralus Entertainment for giving me a free copy of this game. You can check all of their games by clicking the link on the description of this video. Stochastic is designed by Gregorius Tampubolon and Andrew Tanoto, artwork by Fabni and Lovita. This is one big hit from Indonesian board game industry back in Essen 2018. An economic game for 3 to 6 players aged 15 and up, played in about 45 to 90 minutes. Now, let's take a look at the components inside this box. Here we have a serial number for you to register your copy online. We have the rulebook in English. The company boards, lots of money because this is an economic game. Round tracker, some cards, and shares. That's it. Now let's learn how to play. To set up, place these four company boards in the middle of the playing area as the market. Each board is double-sided. Decide which side to use for each board. Then place the corresponding shares beside each board. The number of shares from each company depends on the number of player, as you can see at this table. So, for example, if we play with 4 players, we'll have 10 shares for each company. At each company board, place these two markers. One at the green spot written IPO here, and the other at the center of the performance indicator. These are the forecast tokens. Shuffle them face down and place two tokens face down on the indicated slot on each company board. Leave the rest face down below the market. Shuffle the event and rumor cards separately and place both decks face down above the market. Give each player some money as their starting fund according to this table. So if we're playing with 4 players, everyone will start with 30 bucks each. Place the rest of the money near the forecast tokens divided into 4 nominals. 1, 5, 10, and 50 to form the bank. Place some turn order tokens equal to the number of players above the decks, in this case it's 4, along with the round tracker with this side showing 3 years face up. Place this marker on the first semester of the first year. When we're done, it will look something like this and the game is ready to begin. Talking about economy is talking about a lot of risk, but only those who dare to take some chances will succeed. The price might be unpredictable, but if we're clever enough to speculate, we could be one step ahead. Build our own portfolio, start a rumor, and rise as the richest stock trader of all time. The game will last for 6 rounds, represented by 3 years to semesters each. Each round is divided into 4 phases, starting with bidding phase. First, one forecast token from each company will be flipped according to the current semester. Each year consists of 2 semesters. These are the tokens for the first semester while the ones beside are for the second semester. This is the first semester of the first year, so we'll flip the first token from each company. Next, we'll bid for turn order. Each player will secretly place some money inside the palm of their hand as their bid. Once all players are ready, reveal it simultaneously. Player with the highest bid will take the first player token, second highest will be the second player, so on and so forth. If there is a tie, the player closest to the first player wins the tie. If there's a tie for first player, then the player who went earlier last round wins the tie. If this happens at the first round, the tied player then should increase the bid until there is a sole winner. After flipping forecast tokens and bidding for turn order, we'll continue to the second phase, the action phase. In turn order, players will take turn. On our turn, we can do as many actions as we want. There are 5 kind of actions which I'll explain now. The first action is buying stock from the market. The price of each stock are different as indicated by this marker. Say publicly how many stocks will you buy from that company, then pay the cost. Stocks we own are kept secret in our hands and don't show it to other players. Then increase the stock price of that company one space for each stock that you buy. So let's say I want to buy 3 stocks from Metro. I have to pay 3 times 4 which is 12 bucks back to the bank. And because I just bought 3 stocks from Metro, the price will be increased by 3 spaces. The second action we can perform is selling stocks to the market. It works almost the same as buying stocks, but this time we'll return stocks from our hands back to the market to gain money from the bank. The selling price is equal to the indicated price minus 1, then decrease the price one space for each stock that we sell. Let's say I want to sell these 3 free base stocks, so I'll get 3 times 4, 5 minus 1, which is 12 bucks from the bank, then I'll return the stocks to the market. And because I just sold 3 free base stocks, the price will be decreased by 3 spaces. One important note, on the same turn, we can never buy and sell from the same company. But we still can buy stocks from one company and sell stocks of the other company. Also, if we ever buy or sell more than 5 stocks from a company, the price can only go up or down 5 spaces at maximum. Anyway, if we want to, we can even choose to have a deal with another player, not just with the market. Maybe the market price is quite high that time or we run out of stocks from a company that we need to get it from other players. Negotiations here are done freely. How many stocks involved, players can set their own price. With the only exception B, payment has to be paid by cash. We can never do a stock with stock trade. 
Transactions between players like this will not influence the market price at all. We can even buy and sell stocks from the same company with this method. The third action we can take is we can pay 2 bucks to pick any one face down forecast token which then will be returned to its original place face down. The fourth action is we can pay 3 bucks to pick the top card of the event deck then return it face down as well. The fifth action is we can pay 5 bucks to take one rumor card. We can play it immediately or keep it for later. When played, rumor card is placed face down beside one company that we choose. There is no limit on how many rumor card can be placed on each company. The new card will be placed on top of the previous card. So the five kind of actions are buying stocks, selling stocks, picking a forecast token, picking an event card, or buying rumor card. We can do each action as many times as we want to as long as we can afford it. Our turn will be over once we decide not to do anything else. The next player in turn order will then take his or her turn. The action phase will be over once all players have taken their turn, then we'll continue to phase 3, which is trading phase. Now, all players will get their last chance to have a deal with one another as already explained earlier. But in this phase, we cannot do anything with the market, only between players. Once all players done with their deals, we'll go to the last phase, which is resolution phase. Do the following things in order. Adjust the performance of each company according to the phase of forecast token. Green arrow means up and red arrow means down. For example, the Metro company, it has double green arrow, meaning its performance will go up by two spaces. Discard all the face up forecast tokens, then replace them with four new ones face down from the supply. Next, open the topmost event card and resolve its effect. Event comes in various ways. Sometimes it influences the stock price, sometimes the performance. Sometimes it affects all companies, sometimes it hits a specific company. For example, this event only affects the consumer goods sector, which is multi-level in this case, as written here. The stock price will then go down by 2. After resolve, discard the event card back to the box. For each company, resolve any rumor cards played there, starting from the top going down. Rumor card will only affect the stock price, it's either increasing or decreasing it. After resolve, return these rumor cards back to the box. Then we'll change the price yet again. We'll take a closer look at the company board. This time, watch the number beside the chart symbol. The stock price will go up if the performance are on the right side and the price will go down if it's on the left side. In this case, because it has a good performance, the price will go up by two spaces. Anytime during the game, if the price marker of a company ever reached this X spot, then it's considered bankrupt. All stocks from that company held by players are then returned to the market. Flip the company board along with the stock cards. A new company has emerged over the old one. Set the initial price and performance of this company just like we did at setup. Place two face down forecast tokens from the supply and flip one according to the current master. This new company is now active and its stocks are ready to be bought. After we adjust the price, now it's time to share the dividends. At the end of round, each stock we own will give us some money according to its company performance. This time, we'll pay attention to the number beside the coin symbol. So for example, at the end of this round, I have two various mine stocks, and because it has a stable performance, each stock will give me one buck, so in total, I'll get two bucks. Meanwhile, although I have three metro stocks, its performance is not good, so it will give me nothing at all. And that's the end of the round. Advance the round marker one space forward, and we're ready to begin a new round, starting with the bidding phase again. The game will be over at the end of the sixth round. After dividends are paid, each player will then count up the value of all stocks that they own. At the end of the game, the value of a stock is equal to its buying price as indicated by this marker. Let's say I have 3 multi lever stocks, so 3 times 5 means it's 15 in value. After counting the value of our stocks, add it with the number of coins we have to make our final score. The player with the highest score wins. In case of a tie, the tied player with more stocks on hand wins. And if there's still a tie, the player who went earlier at the last round wins. Basically, that's how you play Stochastic. If you want it more challenging, you can use these character cards which is dealt randomly to each player at the start of the game. At this mode, players won't start the game with the same starting fund. Instead, they gain as listed on their character card. And at the end of each round, all players need to pay the operational cost as listed here. And if we can't do that, we have to sell our stock. No change is given this way. These are the 6 characters available each with its own unique starting fund and special ability. I'll pause the video for a moment for you to see them. Besides the challenging mode, we also have the introductory mode for new players. At this mode, don't use the character cards and flip the round marker to its 2 year side. So we'll only play for 2 years, 2 semesters each, for a total of 4 rounds. And that's everything you need to know about Stochastic. If you have any questions about this game, please put it on comment of this video and I'll answer it. Sorry for any mispronunciation you might heard. Other than that, I'll see you again next time and keep board gaming. Pew!